On our blog, blog.easelsolutions.com, I've posted a couple articles in the past few months about creating mobile applications with kind of non-traditional tools like Captivate. Captivate's a great e-learning tool and a lot of companies are looking to get e-learning on mobile devices. However, e-learning developers often aren't programmers, so the process isn't real easy for them to do. Uh, Adobe is working building in tools to Captivate and other products to be able to make this easier. Right now, you can actually build iPad apps with Captivate. I'm going to show you how to do that. Previously, I've recorded a video that makes the process quite difficult, lots of command line stuff, and there's now a little bit easier way to do it. We're going to actually convert our Captivate file into HTML, JavaScript, CSS using the HTML5 Captivate converter. And then we're going to package that using PhoneGap into a native application. So let's get started. I've got a pretty basic Captivate file recorded here. I didn't want to videotape myself screen sharing, which can always be a little tricky. So I've already recorded a little demo. I just actually screen recorded Google Maps Street View, uh, a little demo of our uh, building and the area around it. So this could be an app that you pull up and you're able to give people a little tour of your building. You can see I just kind of went back and forth with uh, the Google Street View. Now, just to make it a little more like a real Captivate file, I'm going to come to the last slide here and I'm going to add a quiz. So I'll add a question slide, I'll make it a multiple choice slide, and then you know maybe I'll have three answers in here, and I'm not going to be real creative, this is just going to be answer one, we'll have this one be answer two, and we'll have this one be answer three. I'll pretend that answer two is a correct answer. Um, as far as the slide is concerned, I'm going to get rid of the skip and clear buttons, uh, basically, and, and even the back button too. So I basically just have a submit button on the screen, and then of course it made a results slide to show me the results. Now that I'm done with my Captivate project, I'm going to publish it out. I'm going to publish just an SWF file. I'm going to publish it to a folder on my desktop. I'm not going to publish an HTML file because I, I really don't need it. I just want the flash file. I'll hit publish. should just take a second here to publish out. It's not a very big file. Now that it's published, I'll view it. Again, you'll see nothing fancy here. I'm going to actually just hit the button to skip ahead here real fast. You're not going to see a whole lot in the video anyway. Once it gets to the last slide, it should get to my quiz. I'll answer question two. I'll hit the submit button. There we go. Uh, I can click to move on. And of course, we'll see that I passed the quiz. Lovely. But that's a flash file. And flash isn't going to work on every single device. So that's where the HTML5 converter for Captivate comes into play. Now before I show you this tool, let me make note, you can download this from labs.adobe.com. I've got the URL actually in the video here that you can put in. Uh, this is a standalone tool. It's free. It's a beta. It's not really official yet. Uh, Adobe hasn't announced anything official about it, but we would hope to see this as possibly an export setting or, or somewhere in the workflow with Captivate to make it a little bit easier. The whole point of this tool is it converts your flash file to HTML. One thing I want to make note of as well is that there is some operating instructions that come along with this that talk about how to install it. They also talk about all the stuff that's currently supported and what isn't uh, because you, not everything's supported in Captivate right now. So it'll only work with fairly simple projects. So I'm going to hit load. I'm going to pick the SWF file that I just published. It will load it in and actually start previewing it. You'll notice the preset iPad I have selected here and I'm just going to hit convert. While this is converting, I want to make note that uh, when I created my Captivate project, I actually set the dimensions to be 1024 by 768. Um, if I pop back into Captivate for a second here, and I go to make a new project, if I choose blank project, you'll see that iPad is actually a preset that you can choose. Um, if you choose that size, it's going to make your end result be uh, look better because the images won't be scaling or distorting when they're actually on an iPad. Well, it says it's successfully converted. 
close the converter. You'll notice I got a folder in the same directory, and if I look in that folder, I've got an HTML page. So I'm going to run that HTML page. Now if I hit play, it should start playing. I'm going to kind of do what I did before. I'm going to seek ahead to the end. Um, this is playing the way it would be, but I'm just advancing it sort of quickly to get through. I'm on my last slide here. It moves a little bit, and then my quiz should be popping up here in a second. Uh, the converter actually works pretty well with that. Captions, all kinds of stuff come through. I can pick my answer. Now the tricky thing is my submit button. I gotta move my window down a little bit. You can, can't even see it on this recording really, but I'm gonna hit submit. I get my correct click anywhere to continue. I click, I move on, and I come to my last result. So I have an actual HTML file now. This is something that you could easily put up in a learning management system. Um, SCORM reporting is supported right now with it, so you could actually put real courses up in an LMS. The one thing you'll do is you'll rename this file index.html. That way, the SCORM bundler or whatever you're going to use to submit your file to an LMS will know what to, what to grab. Well, finally, I don't want this to go in an LMS or online. I want it to be an actual iPad app. That's where PhoneGap comes into play. PhoneGap is a, a, a company or a, a, a tool that Adobe has purchased. They just announced this. They acquired Natobi, which is the owner of PhoneGap. And what this basically means Adobe's been working with PhoneGap for a couple of years now, but this means that they'll now have a little bit more control over it. And the nice thing, PhoneGap lets you package HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as Android, iOS, Symbian, BlackBerry, lots of different native applications. I'm going to be not using the downloaded version of PhoneGap, but you can download a program. Um, it's also built into Dreamweaver. I'm actually going to use PhoneGap Build, which is uh, an online tool for creating mobile apps. And it's free. Um, if you want to do some extra things with it, you have to start paying. But you can begin doing this for free right now. So if I hit the Learn More here, it's going to take me. I'm going to sign in. Once you log in, if you don't have any applications, you come to this sort of generic screen. Um, you know, they, they actually have this tied in with GitHub. If you use GitHub, it's actually pretty cool because you can actually upload your file there. But I'm going to actually choose to upload an archive or index.html file. Well, I want to do an archive. Before I can do anything, though, I'm going to right-click on my folder and I'm going to zip it. Because I need... I don't just have an HTML file. I have an HTML file with a whole bunch of other assets. So I now have a zip file. Back in PhoneGap, I'll pick to upload it. Here's my zip file. I'm going to add an app name. I'm going to call it Demo App. And I'll hit Create. What this is doing now is uploading the file. It's going through a conversion process on the PhoneGap side so that you can now begin creating Android, iOS, and other platforms. Once your app is finished uploading, you can now begin creating the different versions of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my app and edit it. What I'm going to need to do is add in my signing information. And if you've been building Android or iOS apps, you might be familiar with signing an app. The iOS process is a little tedious. We have other blog posts about what you need, how to get your certificate. And I actually have another video uh, in our video section about how to do all that. So I'm not going to cover that too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my signing, and I'm going to choose Demo App for my profile. Now, just so you know, if you need to if you need to upload your uh, profile, provisioning profile and keys, you can actually do that here as well. But I've already done that, so I have a key called demo app. Again, this is my certificate and my provisioning profile. I'll make note as well that 
those are what you download from your Apple developer account. That has nothing to do with Captivate or PhoneGap. I'll then go back to my demo app. It's now rebuilding the app. You can see that it says it's queued here. It's in the meantime created an Android and a WebOS version of your application. So that's what's kind of cool about PhoneGap build is that it will create all these different versions for you. Because I just updated my iOS information, that's why the iOS is queued. I now see that iOS is done and I can download my IPA file. An IPA file is your actual iPad application. This is a native app. It's a real app. It's no different than uh, any other uh, iOS app or any other tool that you might be using. So I'm just going to drop that in my folder here so it's easy for me to find. Finally, I need to get this onto my iPad so I can actually test it. Now, you can copy it into iTunes and sync up your device. The iPad I have isn't mine. It's another person in our office here. So I'm going to use a website called TestFlight, testflightapp.com, to load it on there. I'll be doing another video shortly about test flight, but for now this is a way to be able to distribute your iOS apps for testing. What I'm going to do is upload a new build. I'm going to drag my IPA file into here. Just say captivate test for the release notes. I'll hit next. This is uploading the IPA file to my test flight account. The test flight account is free. And the nice thing about this is after it's uploaded you can select the people who you want to be able to download it. So if you have a group of testers you don't always have to give it to all of them. You can just pick one person. So I'm going to pick one of the other instructors in our office here. His name is Mark Lair. And I'm not going to have him get an email. I'm going to hit complete. And now it can be downloaded on his iPad. So let's pull up my camera here so you can see my iPad. Now again, I have to download this app, so I'm going to go into Test Flight here. As I mentioned before, Test Flight is just a way to distribute these apps, so you don't have to go through iTunes. You don't have to always sync it that way. So I'm going to download Demo App. Choose to install it. If you went the iTunes route, you would have pulled the application into iTunes, connected your device, and synced it. That way it would work too. Eventually with this file, I could sign it and submit it to the iTunes store, and I would be able to sell the course or distribute it that way. But I'm just doing an ad hoc distribution. So there we go. It's installed. It has a generic icon. I could change that with PhoneGap Build. But I want to see how this looks. So I'm going to open it up. And here's my course. I'll hit play. I'm going to seek toward the end of it here. My quiz should come up at some point. Should I decrease the duration? Here's my quiz. I'm going to pick answer two. I'm going to hit submit. There we go. Click, click anywhere to continue. I'll click, and now I come to my results slide. So there you have it. In just a few minutes, I took a Captivate file, I published it to fl a Flash file, I converted it to an HTML, CSS, JavaScript project with the HTML5 converter for Captivate, and finally I wrapped it all up with PhoneGap Build and distributed it onto an iPad. So hopefully this gets you a way to start producing iPhone, iPad, and other mobile content.